Hey guys, this is your girl Jennifer Land, the Crown Jewel, and I am back with another YouTube video. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So today I want to talk to you guys about the power of forgiving your kingdom spouse. So this is a video and a message for all of the kingdom spouses out there that has had some form of contact and relationship with your uh, kingdom spouse. And for whatever reason, you guys may be in divine separation, um, you know, just because things went left and you know god had to do a thing in order to bring this kingdom love story together so we're going to talk about some um points of uh the power of forgiving your kingdom spouse so number one and i'm going to speak um on these points uh specifically um for myself um, so number one, uh, the power behind forgiving your kingdom spouse, it allows you to focus on your relationship with God. And so that is number one. Um, a lot of times when we have so much going on, when we're so busy being mad, upset, bitter, we cannot focus on the most important thing. And that is having a relationship with God. Number two the power of forgiving your kingdom spouse, you are able to hear God and you are able to do exactly what he needs you to do. When you're able to hear him, uh, you're going to hear what he's saying to you, uh, what he wants you to do in a certain season. And so once again, a lot of times, you know, when we have different things going on, we cannot hear what God is saying when we step away from the chaos and, you know, all the negative things that are taking place in our lives. That means that we're making room for God. And that's the most important thing. Number three is purpose. So the power behind forgiving your spouse, that means you are focused on self and you are ready to do what God needs you to do. And that is you moving towards your purpose, whatever God may tell you. Um, number four, you're able to focus on personal goals and business goals. So, you know, a lot of times when we're in these romantic relationships, um, depending on how things go, if things go left, uh, if we, you know, if we were really engaged with these people, we really seen ourselves being with these people things of that nature, a lot of times we can't focus on, you know, our personal life, our work life, business goals. We tend to let these relationships consume us. And so we don't want to do that. But I find once you step away from, like I said, once again, you step away from the chaos, you're choosing to forgive. You now have a clear mind where you can focus on your personal goals and your business goals, whatever that may be. Number five, you feel lighter. Uh, you no longer feel sad, depressed, angry, bitter. And so a lot of times when we're in a state of unforgiveness, we're holding on to this negative energy, this demonic energy, because as we know, being sad, depressed, angry, bitter, None of those um, elements are uh, the spirit of God. So we know if it's not from the spirit of God, then that means it's coming from the spirit of Satan. He wants to keep us bound and stuck. And so when we uh, choose to forgive our spouse, then we don't have to worry about feeling these different things that we should not be feeling. Um, I know for myself personally, I didn't really... Um, I didn't feel, well, there was a point when I felt angry because of certain things that happened. Um, I think I was mainly sad about, you know, the separation and things of that nature. And along with that, it came, you know, unforgiveness. So you definitely want to be able to stay in the right space when it comes to making sure you're feeling good and you know, when you're choosing to forgive, that means you're saying, you know, to God, I'm ready to be in a better place. You know, you're welcoming positive 
uh, things to come into your life. You're making uh, room for these positive things. Okay. And so number six is uh, you are able to have better relationships with the people around you. Um, and I know uh, many people can probably relate to this. A lot of times when we are in a state of unforgiveness, we're upset, you know, about, you know, these love stories not working out. Um you know, we tend to be upset with the world and we don't want to be bothered with people. I know you guys have seen it maybe when you were out in public. Let's just say if you go to a grocery store and you have someone, um, you know, like a cashier checking you out, um, that cashier may be upset um, and she may be rude. And a lot of women, they tend to, you know, get in these relationships and they will become upset because of the things that men are putting them through. And they will take that energy out on the world. So when you choose to forgive your spouse, you make room uh, to have healthy relationships with the people in your life. And that is something that's very important because you don't want to push people away because of something that you have went through. Okay. So number seven, it allows you to focus is, it allows you to focus on the promises of God when it comes to your kingdom love story. So when you're in a state of forgiveness, the power of forgiveness, you are able to focus on what God has promised you when it comes to love. Um, and that's with your kingdom spouse. Um, once again, it's all about making room for the positive. And in order to make room for the positive, we got to push away the negative. Okay. So number eight is, um, you know, you're no longer focused on what you see in the physical. You are now tapping into the a spiritual. And so when you're able to do that, once again, you're going to be able to hear what God is trying to say to you in regards to your love story. If you are in a state of unforgiveness, nine times out of 10, you're not going to be able to hear God because once again, unforgiveness is not a spirit of God. Um, and so this is a trick of the enemy, in my opinion, where he's using this situation to try to keep you bound and stuck. And when we open a door to unforgiveness, we're opening, opening the door to so many other things. Um, and it's going to start to, um, kind of like fester where all these different things are just going to come up and it's not going to work for your good. So, you know, it's so many reasons why we should not only be forgiving our kingdom spouses, just forgiving people in general that's done us wrong, but specifically with your kingdom spouse, because there are things that God wants to reveal to you. There are things that God wants to show to you. Um, and so, Number 10 is God is going to be able to highlight to you the good qualities about your kingdom spouse. Now, if you're in a, in a state of unforgiveness, nine times out of 10, your mind is not going to even be able to receive what God is trying to show you in terms of good qualities when it comes to your kingdom spouse, because you're not, a lot of times when people when they're in a state of unforgiveness, they don't want to hear anything positive about a person. They just want to solely focus on the negative and what, what that person have done to wrong them. So again, uh, once you begin to forgive, God is going to start highlighting those good qualities about your kingdom spouse. And then not only that, your kingdom spouse, I'm sure you guys know by now that your kingdom spouse may very well be your assignment. And if they're your assignment, they need your prayers. And God is going to be able um, to uh, start to show you these things once you let your guard down and start to forgive your kingdom spouse. But a lot of these spouses, they are our assignment. And that means that we have to stand in a gap for them uh, because, you know, we're fighting a war with the kingdom of darkness and they are fighting a war. And a lot of these kingdom spouses, they're not strong enough uh, because they don't have that spiritual relationship with God. So that means that we have to step in a gap for them 
step in a gap for them and began to pray for them, began to fast for them and things of that nature. Um, I remember, um, I would say I was kind of like half in, half in, um, my relationship, half in the world, half out, out of the world. I was trying to find my way to having a relationship with God. And I remember telling my kingdom spouse that I would be standing in the gap for him. I didn't even realize how much, um, I would have to do that. I didn't understand the fullness of what that really meant. And so, like I said, a lot of these spouses, they are our assignment and they need us. Most importantly, God needs you to be about your father's business when it comes to this kingdom love story. And so these are reasons why we should forgive our spouse. There is power in forgiving. Like I said, once you choose to forgive, you feel lighter. You know, you're going to see some other things begin to manifest in your life for the positive. You open up the door um, for uh, things that God wants to do with you, how he wants to bless you. And like I said, ultimately, these spouses, they need you. They can't see what they're doing wrong because they're being deceived by the enemy. When a person is being deceived by the enemy, they can only see what the enemy is presenting before them. So everything that the enemy is presenting, the um, the sin, uh, the counterfeits, the uh lustful ways of acting, a partying, this is all that they can see. They cannot see what God is really trying to show them because they're coming into agreement with the enemy. They're coming into agreement with the kingdom of darkness. And so it's almost like dealing with a child in a sense. Let's just say um, a child is getting ready to cross the street. A young child is getting ready to cross the street. Um, And they don't know anything about crossing the street. So usually when it comes to learning the proper way how to cross the street, you have to guide a child. You have to teach them how to look both ways before actually crossing the street. If that child doesn't know anything about crossing the street, nine times out of 10, they're only going to be focused on getting to the other side. They're going to be focused on um, the cars, the fast cars, that all the pretty cars that's um, moving from one side of the street to the next. They're not focused on safety and things of that nature. So it's the same thing with the kingdom spouses. They, they're only focusing on what's in front of them and they can only see what's in front of them because they're in agreement with the kingdom of darkness so what's really in front what really can be in front of them which is what god wants to show them they can't even see that because you can't be in agreement with two different gods or two different worlds you can be in agreement with the kingdom of god or uh, Satan's kingdom. And so right now, a lot of these spouses, they have chosen to be in agreement with Satan. And so what I want you guys to understand, you know, there is so much power in forgiving a person. But when you choose not to forgive, that means you have come into agreement with Satan and you're putting limits on what God wants to do with you. And not only that, you're opening the door for other things in your life to take place. And that's because you're in agreement with Satan. You're opening a door for all these other things. Like I said, forgiveness, that's something that comes from the kingdom of God. When you choose not to forgive, that comes from the kingdom of darkness. And so, like I said, when we choose not to forgive, we've now given Satan permission to add things into our lives like bitterness, anger, anger, sadness, um, you know, poverty, all these different things. And now, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard people talk about the courts of heaven. Once you come into agreement with Satan, you've now given him permission to do these uh, things and he can go to God and say, well, there's an, you know, she's chosen not to forgive this person. So now I get to do X, Y, Z. 
And so I may talk about that a little bit more um, in another video. But guys, there's so much power in forgiveness. Uh, when you look at forgiving someone, mainly these kingdom spouses, first and foremost, we always have to ask ourselves, how does God want us to be? We have to be able to resemble God. Two, you want to be able to do it for yourself because, you know, like I said, a lot of people, they don't know when they've wronged you, but specifically with these kingdom spouses, we want to forgive because our kingdom spouses, they are our assignments. And so, you know, God, God wants us to be there to help these kingdom spouses to get to his side to represent the kingdom of God, if that makes sense. So guys, that's all I, I wanted to share with you guys. Um, hopefully this spoke with someone. Well, we look at, I don't know if you guys know the story about um, Hosea and a Gamar, I think that's how you pronounce Gomer, um, his wife. And so when we look at some of these um, stories in the Bible, uh, anything that we go through in life, we can find it in the Bible. But specifically with the story of Hosea and Gomer, um, you know, Hosea, he was a man of God. And so Go Gomer uh, was his wife and she was a woman that, you know, she wanted all these different things, uh, material things. She wanted to live the uh, nicer life and they really didn't have a lot of money. Um, she was a prostitute. And so God had Hosea to, and I, hopefully I'm telling the story right. Uh, God had Hosea to basically marry Gomer because he was trying to be able to show um, the people of the world and not only Hosea, we were, the, the world is basically the prostitute in a sense. And so God wanted to be able to show Hosea, he wanted him to be able to feel what God was feeling. So he could go out and tell this to the world, like you guys are, you know, basically not living for me, you're not doing right, and it's make it makes me very sad. It was making God very sad. So he chose to take Hosea and Gomer and um, have Hosea and Gomer to live out that example. And so when you look at their story, Gomer had, like I said, she was a prostitute. She ran off with other men and cheated on Hosea he was still able to forgive her. And that's really the main point for me bringing them up. How many men do you know that would forgive a man, that would forgive a woman that constantly ran off and cheated on him and, you know, all these different things. So when we look at the fact, you know, this was a man that was living for God. He was going out preaching a word and trying to get the world to see their sinful ways and how their ways made God sad. He was dealing with that, trying to bring change to the world. And he was also dealing with um, a wife that was cheating on him, that left him and, you know, that looked down on him and all these uh, different things. And then when the men that she ran off with, when they kicked her to the curb, he still welcomed her back in. And because of that, God blessed him. But how many people do you know that could even do something like that? So, you know, our spouses probably have, ha, have not done anything nearly as bad. So we have to be able to find room in our hearts to forgive them because like I always tell you guys, the, this journey is not about us. These kingdom marriages are not about us. And so when we are choosing not to forgive, we're coming into agreement with the kingdom of darkness, but we're also being disobedient to God. So God is going to bless your life when you do what's right, when you're choosing to walk with him and, you know, uh, you know, come in agreement with what he wants you to do with this love story. And that means forgiving your spouse. So I just wanted you guys to think about that. I'm going to do a part two to this video, a short part two, and you guys can let me know what you think about it.
This is your girl, Jennifer Land, a crown jewel, and I will talk with you guys next time.